<laughs> Welcome back. Believe in Panthers. Season five premiere right here on Believe Podcast Networks and uh, Tobacco Road Sports Radio.com. Um, loaded show today. We'll get into all of this. We know we've been gone for a couple of months, had to recharge, like I'm sure some of you other Panther fans had to do as well. Uh, we'll get into the Blueprint miniseries that's on YouTube, our thoughts from that. Uh, and our biggest storylines heading into training camp. Training camp players arriving, well, not arriving, it's actually in Charlotte this year instead of Spartanburg, but they're, I saw pictures of rookies like kind of settling in, I, I guess. They didn't have like sleeping bags or whatever with them because they probably just walked to the facility from wherever they were. But uh, we got all that and more coming up here on this season five premiere of Believe in Carolina Panthers. Let's do it. Justin Stewart gets in, fights for Moriarty, it's good to the back of the goal line. That's a big time run by Jonathan Stewart. Welcome to Believe in Carolina Panthers here on Believe Podcast Networks. Do you believe? Rate and subscribe to the show on all major podcast platforms and subscribe to our social media channels on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Video available weekly at youtube.com forward slash at Tobacco Road Sports Radio. Do you believe? so if you normally catch us on twitter i'm just now seeing that twitter oh elon musk he's done changed something where i have to have a premium account in order to stream this to twitter so if you're looking for this on twitter it's not Channel currently here yeah, I'll figure this out over the course of the show. Desmond Johnson here with you, uh, along with Sports Illustrated Panthers beat writer Skylar Callahan and the Panthers all-time leading rusher Jonathan Stewart here for the season five premiere of Believe in Carolina Panthers on Believe Podcast Network. So you can catch us across a variety of different platforms, Facebook. Uh, I'm about to set up the Instagram here in just a second so you can share it that way, uh, and I'll figure this Twitter thing out. Uh, guys, we've been on break for a little bit before we get into the nitty-gritty of everything. What's up? I know Skyler's been super busy. Uh, it, there really is no offseason for Skyler being a beat writer for the Panthers, the Hornets, West Virginia uh, University. So starting off with you, man, uh, you left us with a huge announcement last time we were on that uh, uh, you and your yeah. wife were expecting. How's everything going with the the, Sky, the Skyler Callahan clan? Yeah, it's it's going so far. Uh, we got another couple of months. She's due November 10th. So we got a few more months till until she arrives, but we're excited and uh, trying to catch up on sleep as best as I can, which doesn't really work for me anyways, because I'm trying to get up at four in the morning, get a head start on work. And Oof. yeah, you I, I'm, I'm kind of tired of already. <laughs> so. yeah, okay. Well, at least you'll be used to the four o'clock. Yeah, uh, that's true. For and stuff, Maybe so. that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm preparing. You're prepare, you're, yeah, your uh, preseason. You got your preseason going on. Um, and then, uh, of course, we've got Jonathan Stewart in the house. Stu, um, I know you took some time to relax yourself. I saw a lot of you playing golf on Instagram, I think, the past couple months. How's that golf swing going? Man, golf is life. Um, <laughs> you know? Could you beat Adam and, Thielen? In golf? No, no, I cannot beat Adam Thielen. <laughs> oh, but, is he like know, that? Yeah, he's like that. Um, <laughs> we played in the, uh, what's that tournament? The ACC? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. The, uh, gosh, just took my tongue now. I just, I just had um, him. Yeah. He played in the golf tournament down there in Lake Tahoe. He did well. <laughs> he did Fair. really well, and he is a ball striker, straight up. Um, but, yeah, man, I've been playing a lot of golf. Um, been enjoying my time on the course with my family. Took some trips. Went to uh, a wedding. Um, Christian McCaffrey, that is. Oh, yeah. Um, he got married, and it was a really nice time. And... Yeah, man. Went up to Maine with the fam. Hung, with, hung out with old good old George W. Uh, and just been kicking it. I'm coaching coaching middle school football. Really? Yeah. There's a lot happening right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yo, coach, middle school's in depth, too. Like, they, they've yeah. got some little kids doing complicated schemes and stuff, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We Right now, we you know working on the deep thirds right now. Drop backs, you know. That's great. When I was in middle um, school, it was literally <laughs> power stretch and quarterback slant. Like, that was all you had. See, I haven't played since I was in third grade. So, it was like Pop Warner football where it's like this hole is one. This hole is two. Yeah. This hole is three. Well, yeah. And, and mind you, too, where I'm from, obviously, in West Virginia, we're not, have, not you know blessed with the most skilled athletes. So, it's just run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. 
we didn't really have the athletes to throw it either. So no. maybe that's part of it. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so uh we are a lot we are out now live on the Believe in Panthers Instagram page. So you guys can share the uh the video from there while I still try to get this Twitter thing figured out. Why are they gonna make it where you can't stream unless you have a premium account on Twitter? That yeah, that's, that's trying to make actually, that money. That's what they're trying to do. I'm gonna tell you why we messing. I'm gonna tell you why we messing. They're gonna do that in the middle, like while we're gone. Like that really, I don't like that. <laughs> I don't to you. If it was me, I'd do the same thing, charging everybody. <laughs> Charge everybody. <laughs> I wanna have, y'all want to have Twitter fingers or X fingers now? Yeah, y'all gonna have to pay for that. <laughs> we're we're gonna start charging for people to watch the show. Yeah, really, I mean, that's I the next would. step. Apparently, like we'll have to put this thing behind a paywall or something. Nickel um, for every viewer. I'm going back to this coaching <laughs> thing that I, I'm a part of now. Yeah. Um, the coaching staff goes like this: head coach, Greg Olson, defensive oh. coach, <laughs> what? <laughs> defensive <laughs> coach, Luke Keekley, oh uh, offensive coach, uh, Greg Olson's dad, <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, we're just loaded right now. <laughs> what you're telling me is you're going to run through the schedule like crazy. What school is this? Because I might like roll up. And we got some really good studs. We got a stud named uh, Sawyer. Um, I won't disclose his last name, but he's he's a stud, man. He, um, he's his first year playing football, That's and he's crazy. built like someone's dad. <laughs> <laughs> what, what does the other team do? Like when you guys roll up on the field and they look across the field and they see you, Luke Keekley, Greg Olson. <laughs> that's that's part of coaching. If they over there start <laughs> coaching on the other team. <laughs> Meanwhile, the kids are like, What's wrong? What's wrong? Why are y'all so why are y'all so yeah. upset all of a sudden? What's going on? That's yep. Yeah, I'm gonna have to keep track of that. And then shout out I mean, to that's, um, that's for all the uh the Panthers fans that want that dream team yeah. of former players coaching. Well they have it, it's just a yeah. Exactly. Yeah, ball. Come watch us. Ooh. Shout out to uh, Thomas Davis's son. I guess Thomas Davis Jr. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the last high school football game I broadcasted was Weddington versus Grimsley in the Western 4A semifinals. And it was a dog fight. And I got a chance to finally see his kid up close and personal. Uh, he put a lick on somebody uh, late in that game. And I think he's, he was a sophomore. So I think he's a junior now, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. And Weddington's probably going to open up number one in the state in 4A. I think they brought back everybody, and people are saying their their front seven might be the best in all the state. And yeah, defense. and you got cats going there. Like it's yeah. just like a continuous like flood of kids that realize where rec- um, recruiters and scout, you know, just where where they're all paying their flight miles to. It's and right? it's a nice, it's a nice, it's a nice. <laughs> I'm going to go too. see Weddington. Yeah, and it's a nice campus. Like, I don't know if you've ever been there, but like it, the the football field's in the back. You have to go across a creek, so there's like a little, little like little troll bridge that they have that you walk mm. across and walk up into the thing, and uh, it, it's nice. It was really, really nice. I, w- I wasn't expecting that. So, uh, having said that, I'm hoping my guys will see them some along the way, um, but we'll we'll see. So, all that's about to start happening here in August. Um, let's get into uh, where y'all go first. Y'all want to get this anger out first before we get into uh, Panther stuff? Because might as well. All right, because some of this stuff is fresh. Um, I yeah, I'm gonna if, tell you why we mess. I'm gonna tell you why we mess. I don't know. If Stu said he had one. I, I think Skyler was trying to decide between two. I have one very specific one, um, <laughs> and it has nothing to do with football. But people are gonna be able to agree with me on it. I think, uh, Skyler, you wanna you wanna go with yours or? Yeah, I guess I'll get mine out of the way because, like I said, mine's very childish and in <laughs> some ways very selfish. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna tell you why we mess. I'm gonna tell you why we mess. I've been waiting over a decade for this college football game to come out. Oh, no. And I'm a season in to my dynasty, right? Yes, I've been grinding that much. And technically, I'm two seasons in now, but hear me out. Jeez. After the first <laughs> year, I've had some players like my star players, like my quarterback, my star receiver, their numbers are all changing. And I'm like, what the heck's this? Like, you can't, you can't go and edit their numbers. And when you bring in new recruits, if they want a certain number, it doesn't matter if your starting quarterback's been rocking that number, he's going to get that number. So you can't change it. And to me, it just really messes it, it up for me because, like, the visuals and then you think about, like, having to learn certain players. Like, when I'm trying to go through and pick the player I'm on, on defense, I want to know who 94 is, who 10 is, who, whatever. I have to relearn it all. But the main thing that really ticks me off about it is my quarterback just switched from number eight to number 87 – and my star wide receiver is gone from four to ninety one, and my left tackle is now number one, and Why I can't it, change what? it. 
Uh, yeah, that doesn't yeah. sound, <laughs> sound good. This has all. never been an issue with previous football games. Everyone's talking about it on Twitter, but yeah, that's why I'm mad. Again, that, pretty childish, but yeah, a little bit, but I understand. Because to be honest, most people playing that game are not children. <laughs> but I understand. Yeah. It seems like it's grown adults like playing that game. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna tell you why we mess up. I'm gonna tell you why we mess up. I, actually, everything I've heard, like the detail in that game, all the way down to like they oh, do like, nice. the Wake Forest yeah. chant, like when Wake gets the first down, it's like first down, Wake, and then the crowd goes forest. Like they got that in there. Like they had Wake Forest new uniforms before they even unveiled them to they, the public. They did a really good job with all the detail. Like I, I don't have much to complain about with it other than that. But you see all these updates that they're trying to add to it. There's some school logos that I, I haven't noticed but have messed up or they've got some audio wrong. I just think they crammed so much into this game at launch and maybe they needed to even push this back another year or maybe just add some of this stuff over the next few years instead of trying to get it all into this one game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the demand's definitely there. That's all I've been hearing about from yeah. people was that game. Um, I Mine actually has nothing to do with football, but the country should be able to unite around this. Yeah, I'm going to tell you why we mess it. I'm going to tell you why we mess it. What is – I'm trying to figure out how I want to go with this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh boy. Why why do people think that this year's US men's Olympic basketball team could run with the 92 dream team? Cuz that's the sentiment I keep getting from people that oh this team is one of the greatest ever assembled. They would be able to play with the dream. They beat the dream team. And I'm like this team almost lost to South Sudan like a couple days ago, like it took a LeBron James layup with 11 seconds to go. They were down the entire game to South Sudan. South Sudan has JT Thor, who Skyler's very familiar with. He was in and out of the Charlotte Hornets 15 man rotation and couldn't stay in it. And the the uh the, the Sudan kid that's going to Duke that's in their top class or whatever. Uh I think the seven foot kid, I think he's on that team. That's it. <laughs> that's it. And this team with LeBron James, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant. Joel Embiid, Devin Booker, Anthony Edwards, who we were high on at the end of season four of this last year. They got all these players. And it's like they don't they don't play defense at all. Like they just – all of them are standing outside the three-point line. They're all looking at LeBron pretty much. LeBron is 39 years old. He's playing 40 minutes a game, an exhibition out there, game. For out the there world. killing these young boys, though. Yeah, they're killing them. He's 39. I'm like, they haven't even started the real games yet. And the real games start this upcoming weekend, I believe. But it, and by no means is it guaranteed that the they're going to win the gold medal. Like in fact, I'm kind of expecting them not to because they kind of remind me of the 04 team uh, where they had LeBron and uh, I think D Wade and Carmelo were on it, but they were like one year in to their careers, so they didn't really play. Larry Brown was the coach, had like Allen Iverson on it and uh, Tim Duncan, and they won the bronze. And that was when people were like, "Oh, okay, we need to get back to getting all this stuff together." And that led to the 08 Redeem team and Kobe and all that. Kobe played defense. Mm-hmm. Kobe actually led that team defensively, and they yeah. played. Who's doing that for this team? Because I, I think there's a single player on this team. There's still, still time. There's still time for them to figure that out, right? If you look back, though, like Kobe was the one that had to ignite everybody. Like, hey, we dragging our feet here. <laughs> Y'all yeah. better step up. And they, they had some. They had some games where they was playing poo poo, like they was playing against <laughs> South Sudan, right? Yeah, and so. But I will say this: the game is growing, right? Just yeah, like golf. Yeah. <laughs> um, but basketball isn't necessarily like you have talent that's growing internationally. Now, America will always continue to be superior, but when you talk about other, you know, countries coming together for the Olympics and playing for their country, and what that what effort you get out of those guys in team ball i mean i'm probably i'm pretty sure that they're playing relatively better team ball than the usa is right now right yeah, they look Especially like they when, yeah. when you watch these games they play like college football they play like college basketball mm-hmm. they just shoot more right they they actually don't wait to the last minute to shoot <laughs> when you know you see a shot they take it but that's really kind of how i see the international you know you know game and and the struggles for the usa um you're not seeing all these blowouts because teams are doing a good job of actually playing the game passing the ball around taking some time up off the clock 
and all those types of things and, and making it to where um, the USA has to not make many mistakes. Um, because if one guy, you have a lot of those guys that can take over a game, right, on their own squad, you know, throughout a regular season. So now you have these guys like, man, I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> that is kind of so, what's going on. Yeah. They're, they're, so they're basically like, hey, LeBron, this is this is this is your show. Like you, you're the oldest one. But that's the problem. He's the oldest one. Like he's 39. <laughs> he's yeah. played like four Olympics. And yeah, I'm gonna tell you why we mess up. I'm gonna tell you why we mess up. What happens when LeBron inevitably has a bad game and can't bail them out the last second? Somebody I, ho- hopefully someone realizes that he's having a bad game and they step up, right? We're, where is Steph Curry? Like I feel like a lot of it on. is like the the desire to win. And I, I don't know, maybe I, I shouldn't be questioning, but I just feel like it's not the passion isn't as there maybe as it once was like 30, 40 years ago or even 20 years ago for the USA because they've dominated this thing for so long and the game's changed now. We talk about load management in the NBA all the time. These guys aren't gonna go out there and play hundred percent effort. In, the, in this thing. I mean, they, they may go 80% good. and still win gold. But yeah. when you go back to the dream team, I mean, those dudes were playing like it was game seven of the NBA finals. And so they were, huge the, the core of it was in their prime. Like people yeah. forget in 92, Jordan, Pippen, they were just coming off back-to-back titles. Barkley won MVP the next year in 93. Malone won MVP five years later. Stockton yeah. was in his prime. David Robinson just won a scoring title while Jordan was retired and scored 70 points in a game like – Half the team was in their prime. This team, half of this team is in their mid 30s. Like LeBron ain't the only old old person on the team. Steph is 35, KD's 35, and Bede's over 30. Like the young kids like Anthony Edwards, Devin Booker, mm-hmm. Jason Tatum, they're not playing as much as I think they should. And it's gonna take a surprise. Like somebody's gonna sneak up on them here in the Olympics, and I think they're gonna get beat by somebody. I don't want them to get beat, but just watching them play, they're not gonna magically play defense. They don't play it for their paying jobs. <laughs> so right. like, I, don't, I don't see them doing it in the Olympics. So that's just today. They barely got by Germany and LeBron had to go on his back again the last like couple of minutes to pull them out. And that just doesn't make any sense to me. So, I mean, it's um, kind of like uh 2004, right? That's like, what I was saying. Yeah. They remind yeah. me of them. They were, mm-hmm. they're, they're dependent on the names on the back of the Jersey and they're hoping that the teams they see are going to be scared of the USA on the front. But a lot of these teams now, like to y'all's point, have NBA players on them. So it's like, they're not scared to play LeBron or Steph, but right. they play them anyway. So it's yeah. like the, now having said that the world has gotten better, but we're supposed to be better too. Like that, that was the other thing. Cause people always tell me Yo, that today's athletes in the NBA are better than the ones in the nineties. You know what I mean? That's the argument I get sucked into. And I'm like, well, if they were better, they'd be able to play defense because these guys ain't playing. Well, defense I, was, <laughs> I can argue that because the athletes nowadays compared to the nineties, Oh, absolutely. Different. That's way different. Yeah. You got to be out of your mind to think differently. Well, then it's mentally. Expo- the ex- 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 exact. That's what it is. It's the mental the part. Too. It's, the ex- yeah. it's the mental aspect of defense. It's the mental aspect of like. To want to. I want to play defense. It's Need just like to. football, right? When we talk about football and a running back taking on a block, Coach Skip used to tell us all the time, running backs coach, you don't have to block him with all the technique i want you to just hit him in the mouth <laughs> you gotta want to hit somebody in the mouth you gotta want to block somebody you gotta be a crazy mofo to be putting your hands on your somebody. body into somebody yeah so because you're not doing it often right so you gotta have that mentality of i don't care how i protect the quarterback i'm just gonna put my body out there and basically say my will is to put you on the ground um and and you have to have that mindset when you play defense if you're not a defensive player you have to channel it just like kobe does man kobe was one of the greatest because he legitimately i saw this i saw this clipping today of guys talking about kobe and and him being on the course hissing right like a snake (laughs) i'm like whoa so this man really thought he was a snake Oh, While he was playing, like he like Mama. turned it on, and a lot of guys don't have that mentality where they can just turn into this like, you know, alter ego, and really and truly, like, manage that within a game, and so that's like a 
that's an art in itself and i think it's a lost art that's actually a good segue into um actual panther stuff because uh blueprint we didn't get a chance to talk about blueprint before we went to break and um one of the things they were referring to in that especially the second episode was how they decided to build from the inside out with the offensive defensive lines um with the 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 signings that they did there but i wanted to actually go more into on episode two i rewatched it the other night because i knew we were coming in to do this and um how how they they kind of frame dan morgan as like the brain of all this like he's the central figure everything kind of runs through him at this point now and not uh not a contingent of people it's not uh you know scott fitter plus dan uh, morgan plus this guy and that guy and this offensive coach and that guy it's him like everything runs through him um and i'm just excited to kind of see how they react to this because there's a certain i don't know like a spark or something that's in the air right now that i did not feel this time last year in the offseason although we were very happy about the coaching change and i think Looking back on it, we were more happy Matt Rule was gone than we were uh, who they brought in and everything else. And we convinced ourselves that it was going to work. We found out really after preseason game two, maybe, that <laughs> it probably wasn't going to work. <laughs> and we just held on for the ride. Thoughts going into this year. Uh, Skylar, you first in terms of uh, you said you watched the Blueprint episodes and you've been in and out of the building. So you've been talking to these guys. Um, and then we'll get Stu's opinion on Dan Morgan himself uh, and him knowing him and, and actually working with him off and on here uh, for the Panthers. Your thoughts on Dan Morgan and what he's done since we've been off the air between free agency, the draft, which we were still on for that we talked about, moves they've done since then, and, and just the overall vision. They feel like things are more um, – I don't want to steal it from uh, Panthers playbook, my guys Chris Lee and Dennis Cox, but they've been going on about them being aligned, and that's kind of that's kind of the right word. It feels like they're more aligned this year than they've been in the past. What, what have been your thoughts from being inside the building? Well, I mean, that's that's exactly what everyone ridiculed the previous regime for, right? They weren't aligned. It was Scott Fitter said this, and David Tepper had this thought on it. Nicole Tepper had this thought on it. Matt Rule had this thought. Frank Reich, I want this quarterback. The OC wants this quarterback. I want to run this offense, this offense. Nobody was on the same page. So when you try to bring 15 different ideas together all down to one, it's going to look like what you saw last year. And I kind of hinted at it really early on, maybe like week two or three last year when I talked about it on here, how you have Frank Reich and his passing – uh, offense that he he comes from. And then you bring in Thomas Brown, who's from the Sean McVay tree. Those are two totally different things. Those things clash head to head. They do they do not mesh well together at all. Yeah. And we saw that. And even after Frank was fired, it still just didn't look like a good product because they'd been taught for several months this is how we're going to do things, and then they try to pivot, and it just didn't work. But as far as Dan goes, like. I think he's done a phenomenal job in terms of doing the most of what he can with the resources that he has. He didn't have a ton of cap space. He didn't have a first round pick until he traded into the round. And I think he did a really good job with that Brian Burns trade. You get a you get a, that 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 pick back um next year, that second round pick. They eventually made some other moves and got that second round pick back for next year. They were able to get Brian uh, Brian Burns off the books which as good of a talent as he is, I don't know that you want to pay a pass rush for $30 million when you're starting to really t- try to get this thing moving again. So it makes sense. But with Dan, I think the difference between what we're going to see in the future with him versus what we saw with Scott is, look, you have a guy that not only played the game in the NFL, but played it at a very high level and played it here where, where he's managing the roster. He understands what it ha- what it's going to have to take for this team to be competitive, to be in the mix for the NFC uh, NFC South titles and so on and so forth. I don't know if Scott really knew that. He comes from Seattle, all those years with John Schneider. He's a baseball slash football guy. I, he's a smart guy, but I think he was playing too much of the 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 upstairs thing, trying to figure out how to be cute with analytics and stuff like this. Dan Morgan uses his eye and says, yep, that's the guy for us. Yep. If he plays hard, plays fast, plays physical, that's our type of guy. And I think that's what's going to really bring out the new DNA in this team is we're really going to see it look like what Dan Morgan was when he played here. That was the vibe I caught from Blueprint, that he's really 
The difference between Scott Fitter and Dan Morgan is that Scott Fitter didn't have a – Here it is. Scott, Scott didn't have a yeah. type. He didn't have a type. Exactly. Dan, yeah. a type. Dan knows exactly the type of guy he wants, and he echoed it throughout the episode that dogs. You know, he wants a dog. He want, he want he's, he's mentioned Stu. He's mentioned Steve Smith. He's mentioned other guys that have played for the Panthers in the past where he's like, we need a guy like this. We need a guy like that. And he uses Stu or Smitty or whoever as an example, not just as a player, but as a leader and like – the mentality coming in day in and day out so that the younger players are seeing this and they're, they're following. And I thought they did that in the draft. I thought they did that really well in terms of finding guys, especially after round two, that could be diamonds in the rough. Uh, Stu, what are you seeing from being out of the building um, in terms of Dan Morgan's had now? When did Dan get hired? Back in January, February? It's been a minute. Yeah, it's been, it, it was around that before, time. Before yeah. the Super Bowl. I think it was before the Super Bowl, wasn't it? So, um, he's been in now about half a year, six months. Um, the team has had a drastic makeover in terms of the roster, in terms of turnover. Uh, we'll get to our big three, our, our three biggest storylines going into training camp here this week, here in just a second. But uh, your thoughts on what Dan Morgan's done, uh, just taking control of this team because it feels like he, David Tepper and Nicole Tepper have been like, okay, we've tried it this way, we've tried it that way, let's try it this way, and we're going to step out the way, and we've got an actual former Panther in the middle of it doing it that knows how we want it done. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, man. Like it's basically like this. You can't, you can take a star player, right. And put him on a team. But if you expect him to change the team because he's a star, star player and you expect him to have, you know, elite numbers just because he's placed on a team. Um, it doesn't mean anything, right? And I think Dan Morgan realizes that. I mean, you see it with the Brian Burns, Brian Burns trade, right? And unfortunately, the culture for the Panthers wasn't right for Brian Burns to shine himself. If you think about it, you look at guys like Christian McCaffrey, like he's in Florida, he's in San Francisco now. Um, I mean, you just you can name a lot of guys on this roster that you think to yourself, man, it would have been nice to keep the, keep that guy. But you can have these types of guys, but if you don't have the right culture, if you don't have, you know, what you, what your, your type, I mean, like what you were saying, um, you can't really get anywhere. And, you know, what I've seen Dan do this off season, starting with, you know, Dave Canellas, um, getting a guy in here that can relay the message right and relay this environment for guys to learn and not just the players but the coaching staff how do we want the coaches to coach how do we want them to um manage players how do we how do we go about this right how are we going to practice um and being a player's coach being a player's gm even <laughs> right so he understands what it what it means for a rest day. He understands what it means for a guy that's coming in seven years in the league and he's got, you know, a little bit of tread left on his tires. He knows what type of rest he's going to need. He's going to be able to communicate well with the training staff and all those types of things and have an understanding for who he needs to have in the pockets of depth, right? Yeah. And we talk about the pockets of depth. We talk about the guy that needs development. You talk about the guy that, oh, he can come in and start for us if something goes down. Like, he sees this, you know, from a whole different vantage point, I think, than what we've seen lately, just simply because of his experience playing football um, and having injuries himself and having to grit through things and have to grind through pain and suffering and the mindset of, you know, an elite warrior at the end of the day. That's what he was on the football field. Um, and then coming from Miami, like that's just a type of different type of breed, yeah, right? Especially from nice. the time that he, the time that he played there, right? Mm -hmm. It's a different breed of dogs right there. And so you have this common, you, you're creating a common understanding within the front office, the scouting department, which is basically self-awareness and awareness of others and building trust right hey this is what it is and if it's not this don't talk about it <laughs> right 
if we want the color blue and it's not blue, let's not talk about it. Let's not waste our time, right? Put it in this file cabinet. And if things change, we'll go back to that file. Um, and then from the coaching standpoint, you know, getting a guy like Dave uh, Canella isn't coming in here. This is a guy that, um, again, common understanding, right? Clarity and empathy, like understanding, you know, how players tick, understanding how they learn, understanding their strengths and their weakness, how far they are from making that weakness a strength. And what does it take to make that weakness a strength for the team? Not just looking at a weakness as, oh, we can't do anything about it. No, there's always something you can do about it. Mm-hmm. When you look at you look at how, you know, what he's doing with Bryce, right? Last year, leading the league in sacks, right? How do we fix that? Yeah, we got to get some 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 strong offensive linemen. Up big front. boys. Yeah. Big boys, right? But not just big boys. We need big boys that are aggressive. We need guys that are just going to do their job, right? And how do you um, complement that? How do you complement a guy to say, hey, just do your job, and I promise you we'll be happy? You make it easier for that guy to do his job. And how do you make it easier for an offensive lineman to block? Hey, quarterback. Let's get the ball out quicker. Yes. Let's get the ball out quicker so that way we can have confident offensive linemen up front and they know what they're doing. They're not questioning themselves, right? It 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 because every now and then you're gonna need to bail your offensive lineman out. Every now and then you're gonna need to bail your quarterback out, and vice versa for every single position on that football field, offense and defense. And that comes from a brain of a guy that's played the game. You know what I'm saying? Dan Morgan understands, hey, we need guys that are just going to come here and do their job and do their job well. And that can buy in. And when you buy into something, it means you're offering someone something that they are interested in. If I tell you, hey, you're a great singer, right? And I want you to perform in front of this large crowd. I'm going to give you a mic to do it even. Now you're thinking to yourself, oh, so I don't got to yell and scream and crack my voice so that way people can hear me. (laughs) Like, like, yeah, I'll take that up, you know, and we'll even give you this sweet sound system to where you sound like, you know, uh, what's that? That phrase, uh, Fergie and Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) So like, it's like a give and take almost. Right. So like, (laughs) You offer someone something that is, you know, essential to how they perform better. That's how you buy in. Like, you don't just say, hey, you're here to do the impossible. Okay, that sounds terrible. (laughs) (laughs) All right, great. I'll try. (laughs) Start. (laughs) But, you know, it's crazy, too, because you talk about the buy in, and that's the compare contrast to last year and thinking back on it. I don't know if they ever full the players. I don't know if they ever fully bought into the coaching staff. And I kind of understand why, because of the, all the stuff we ended up hearing after the fact in terms of them not being on the same page. And I don't know exactly what offense we were running. You know, we were, we were doing the show week 16, 17, 18 last year, still trying to figure out what the hell their identity was on both sides of the ball. I mean, even, even, even though the defense played well, there were still some things where you kind of didn't really know what they were trying to do. I, I think for the most part, we're talking about offense here, but, it just – from the day that Dave Canales and Dan Morgan were introduced, you knew what the identity was of this team was going to be. It was be physical up front, run the damn football, play defense. Simple as that. Mm-hmm. Last That's year, football. it was like we're all over the damn place. That's Panther right. football. It's been Panther football for 27 years. And whenever people seven, come in yeah. – whenever people try to come in and change that identity – it never works. <laughs> it never yeah, works. I was, <laughs> I was talking with Willie P on WFNZ last mm-hmm. week, and he actually brought this up too. And I almost wonder, you know, or he almost wonders too, but um, with Dan Morgan kind of coming in and, and changing this and making it this kind of new vision, this new identity, is he almost trying to like take what they did in that little short stint with Steve Wilkes and maximize that because – I mean, it sucks that Steve's not here to to run the show because obviously he deserved that opportunity. We can have that conversation for another day, but that team was dangerous, and they didn't really have that much to work with. They see, just mm, had an identity. 
I don't think that was really Steve Wilkes' identity. I think Steve Wilkes just understood the Panthers' identity and was yeah. uh, was like putting it on the the roster that he was inheriting. Um, I don't think that was a Steve Wilkes type of defense. I think that was just what Steve Wilkes was taught right. as it's defense like coordinator season, here. It's like seasoning chicken, bro. Right. But go on. Go on. <laughs> this is like so, you go into your seasoning drawer, right? You got to figure on, out man. what you have. So that way you can season your chicken. You just don't be putting anything on your chicken, though, right? There's four essentials. You got to put four. them in there. There's you got to put some, yes, like you got your Lowry's, okay? You got your garlic, salt, okay? You got your lemon pepper, ooh, okay? Ooh, ooh. And then you got some <laughs> You got some paprika, okay? Ooh, ooh, ooh. And yeah. then you got Hold salt on. and pepper. <laughs> you okay? play. Hold on. You use Lowry's to start off. You're going to finish with some salt, too? Nah, bro. I'm just saying the essentials in your okay. lap, in, within like, your yo, within your one. drawer. You won't put it all in. Yeah, there, right? You about to cook, but but yeah, like if you're you thinking to yourself, like, like, oh, I'm a I'm gonna throw some ginger in there. Like, right. wait, hold on. Huh? Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> what you doing? Like, what you doing? I'm gonna throw some mustard in there. Hey, hey, I'm gonna throw some cinnamon in there because that's what I have. Relax. Like, no, we don't want to do that. We just want to make the chicken do what it do with the things that we got. And we want to be able to serve it to people to where they say, man, that's some pretty good chicken. See, this is what this is what you guys have missed while we've been off. And ter- you get Panther content, but you also get things like how to cook chicken and, you know, things of that sort. You can only get it here, believe. Do you believe? So, like, yeah. that, this is where you come for all that action. Um, mm-hmm. I So, I've been thinking about Dan Morgan in terms of how he's been doing this. Dude's almost like a machine. Like, the way he kind of formulates stuff in his head and then goes mm-hmm. after stuff. And looking at stuff now... People were complaining that we didn't get a first for uh, for Brian Burns. That ship had sailed. Like to be honest, looking back on it, we're lucky to have got what we got. Uh, and now, are y'all watching the hard knocks on the Giants? Yeah, yeah. How do you feel about that? Because I'm watching it, and there's a lot of there's a lot more cringe moments, like like seeing them talk about players at this. Yeah, part the, of the whole year. Saquon Barkley thing. Oh, yeah, man. I'm just yeah. like, man, look, y'all shouldn't have recorded that. Uh-uh. Or I'm, yeah, yeah. You know, with, with, with Saquon, that the minute he said those words of "we're gonna let you test the market," like you're not you're not interested yeah, in bringing let, the guy back. You nope. let him do what, and you could hear it in Saquon's voice too. He's like, like hey, I, you know, yeah, I told y'all that you know what it is, but he didn't commit or nothing after that point. He was like, "No, nah, I'm out, I'm out." And then he did go to the Eagles of all places too. Yeah, and to hear I, uh, John Mara, mm-hmm. where yeah. he was just like. I'm not gonna go sleep if he goes to Philadelphia or whatever. And well, like, you should have signed him then. I don't want to hear none of that. Listen, <laughs> I don't want to hear none of that. I don't care. No one feels bad for you. You should have done right by Saquon. And, and he, he had a chance. And I hope that Saquon does what he needs to do next year when they get, when they go up there. Or do they play them next year? Who? Cool. Oh, Philly. Oh yeah, but yeah. Oh, absolutely. They're, they're in their division. Uh-huh. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> twice. <laughs> At so minimum, yeah, I can't wait to see what he gets to do to these boys. I mean, and, I, and then, you know who's really in trouble? <laughs> Them Cowboys. Mm, you want to talk about it? We want to talk about it because I think so. They ain't done nothing. They signed yeah, the kicker. Uh, Cowboys is in trouble. They signed know. Zeke back after they let him go because they thought he was done. Then they brought him back a year later. So this is a year older Zeke. I don't know what as a, as a as a fellow <laughs> running that, back. That's as a fellow running around. back, I hope everything goes well for Zeke. Yeah, that would be nice. They're, we just hmm. got to make sure that offensive line is sturdy. Who and gets I, the? I don't, I don't mean to be the the making fun of the Giants podcast here, especially <laughs> because Carolina has their own quarterback issues. But this is the same organization that decided to not only take Daniel Jones as the top ten pick, but pay him north of forty million dollars per year. That, that was the thing too in that episode last week. Last week where they were like, "Look, if there's a quarterback sitting there, we might take him. If not, I mean, yeah, it was old Daniel Jones to get him some weapons. I'm like, how does Daniel Jones feel yeah. <laughs> after hearing this? Like, oh, okay, great. We clearly are just like, we're just kind of trying and wait until we can get a new guy. Yeah, <laughs> because, we suck with Daniel Jones is the way it sounds yeah. watching this show. And I know Daniel Jones is watching it. And like, I mean, it's if it's I heard that, I'd be like, man, screw you. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, why do I want to play here? Let's say Quan Barker. Crazy the same now. thing. <laughs> like, why yeah. do I want to play here? I'm just go. I'm gonna go to the division rival to make it hurt even more because he probably could have went someplace else. But he you knew. Think, going you think some of these hurt. players should take a, a page out of Jalen Brunson's playbook? Take, take a pay cut. Pay, take a pay cut. <laughs> Yeah, so much money in the NBA though. Like, is he really gonna miss it? <laughs> like, he's gonna he's gonna get another deal like in I four can, years. I can tell you the answer to that. 
But some teams the answer will. Is no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the answer is no. Is no. If you offering me something? Listen, I know I don't. I, I, I know what I'm worth. Like, pay me that. Exactly. I think, I think you'll see some guys do it. Depend like where they're at in their career. Like if they're yeah, like if you're Tom Brady or something like that. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't think Tom Brady. Well, if he did a if little you, bit. If you're a star good. receiver, like if you're Devontae Adams, whenever his deal's up, I mean, like, I think he would want to go play with Patrick Mahomes for a year. <laughs> Or Trevor Lawrence, maybe Trevor Lawrence. I've been hearing the Jets. Jets. He's trying to get back with with uh, a Rod or whatever. That'd be nice. There's some man. There's so many stories going into the season. I know we said we're going to do the top three for the Panthers next mm-hmm. time. We'll do the top stories for around NFL. But uh, I'm curious to see what Aaron Rodgers looks like. We saw three plays from him last year, and the mm-hmm. Jets are building like all this around him. What if he comes back and I don't think he'll be garbage, but what if he is? <laughs> like, what if he comes back and he's not good or? He's only going to be another year older, so he's going to be a year older, coming off of a was fresh it Achilles? body, Achilles. Yeah, Achilles. I just, I don't. I mean, Granny was walking around without crutches after what, like something stupid, like five weeks or something nuts. He was out there throwing a football. We were like, what in the world? <laughs> like, yeah. how did that happen? So maybe he is going to be okay. But uh, what about uh, Brandon Ayuk? Would you kick the tires on Brandon Ayuk for Carolina? Do we need him? I will. Uh, it makes sense in a lot of ways, but he, here's the thinking behind it. We are probably going to keep six receivers. If you if you make that trade, mm. and for some reason Bryce just isn't the answer again, and your team's down, you may be trading the number one overall pick again. Oof. Uh, we don't want to do that. <laughs> we don't want to no. do that again. No, I don't even want to be in that position. Like I'm looking no. at it like Bryce. If Bryce is letting the ball go three seconds or less, and he's being this kind of what he was running at Alabama, wasn't it? Like it was tight, concentrated. Boom, get it out fast. Let your skill players do the work and you just be the maestro and dictate traffic. That's what one of my Heisman. So I'm like, let's play. I mean, you got Deontay Johnson, you got Adam Thielen, you got Xavier Leggett. Like, you've got pieces. And, and like Stu team. said, there, there's a couple other guys. I mean, you got Mingo, Terrace Marshall, Mingo's, damn, Mingo's Mingo's Smith Marset. Like, there's there's Ooh. bodies there. They just got to step up. I don't think they need to trade for IU. Like, yeah, I, I don't think they do. But yeah. you, you I just only wonder where he's going to go, though. You're on the cusp, but he's asking for a trade. Home. He's KFC, asking for a trade. I'm going to say KFC, Kansas City. <laughs> KFC, you <laughs> hungry, boy? Yeah, I think All I, that chicken <laughs> talk. <laughs> we don't do this in the morning. No, this is around dinner time now. Yeah, Kansas City, maybe. I mean, you know, Kansas City, Kansas City's trying to do something Kansas, no one's ever done. They uh, go three, back to back to back, three peat NFL. History. Pittsburgh's who I keep hearing for IU, but I, I don't know if that it's worth well, sneaky. That makes sense because they need some help. They yeah, especially losing Deontay Johnson. Like they, yeah. they're gonna that actually makes sense too. Let me ask this before we go back into our, our top three for Carolina's training camp. If Pat Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs do this and three P this season, does that make Pat Mahomes the GOAT? No. He'd have four four NFL yeah. titles. He'd be the only quarterback to, to win back to back to back. He probably would have another MVP. The only reason I say no is because there's still so much football left. And yeah. you have no idea. Like, I mean, we can all project and see here and say, yeah, if he wins another Super Bowl this year, he's probably going to win maybe two more after this. But, yeah. I mean, it's if he's got eight to ten more years left, what did those final eight to ten years look like? Because we saw what Tom Brady looked like in his yeah. third year. What if he decided to quit, though? Like, That's, oh, if oh so if he around like two room? years and just be done. Yeah, what if he was like, all right, good, good, oh. good, good. All right. I'm saying Jordan has yeah. six titles. Bill Russell had 11, but we've never called Bill Russell the GOAT. It, it was like all about moments. That's why Jordan's considered well, the GOAT, right? His, ratio, his, his year to Super Bowl ratio is insane. Sick. <laughs> it shouldn't even exist. He's, like, I don't he's even understand. by far the most talented quarterback, I think, that I, and I think we can all agree has ever played the game. Yeah. Most talented, yeah. for sure. He, I will say he's the only one where I'm like, what the hell was that? Like when he in a good <laughs> way, like like when he does, like the behind the back passes and like mm-hmm. no look passes, like he was you don't do doing that. it too. And he's already <laughs> starting to make that connection with that young rookie they got too. Oh, oh, uh, worthy the dude that they drove yeah, up for. I seen that's him connecting be, with him on online. That might be Tyreek uh, Hill 2.0 because he was yeah. the fast one too. But only one around the four two. Yeah. Yeah, watch out for Kansas City. All right, let's Panthers. Uh, biggest storylines going into training camp, one from each of us. Um, I'm debating which one I want to go to. Uh, who wants to set this off? Because we got a couple things here, things are better than they were last year, but there's still some open stories here that we don't have answers to yet. So I'm curious to hear from my guys 
in terms of oh, man. what's the one thing you're really keeping an eye on as we start training camp, which starts uh, Wednesday, right? Yeah. Just um, do you have a lid on this thing. Yeah, you want to uh, get in there. Let me see here, man. Um, I mean, I guess really the concern is just protection. We just got to know whether or not we can protect Bryce. And <laughs> After all that money they spent, if they still can't protect this I boy. think I think we will only be able – because this is how I see it, right? Off season, we've been speculating, right? The guys on paper, you know, up front, they dogs, right, to their mm-hmm. right. But we got to see them play together. We got to see Bryce and his – you know, what he's been working on this offseason. Clearly, he's been in the weight room. Um, you know, I yeah, don't yeah. question his work <laughs> ethic at all as far as what he's going to, you know, bring to the table. But we just got to see whether or not he can be protected consistently. And if he can protect himself, you know, by getting the ball out faster and, and just getting on some, you know, some good chemistry um, lanes with his offensive line, his protection and and just the the groups of receivers out there getting open, um, yards of separation. You know what I'm saying? I want to see that. Um, you know, uh, I want to see that expand. I want to see that. You know, be better basically because last year that was a problem too. Guys weren't open. So, yeah. the quarter, just that the offensive line, quarterback, and then just guys getting open, and hope hopefully Deontay Johnson's presence um helps all that you know and then obviously having xavier Leggett, you know out there i'm excited to see what they do as far as dressing up things and getting him moving around in the backfield um so i mean but mainly just protection it wasn't just words out they did what they actually said this when dave canales came in he said our main priority is to get weapons for bryce and to get protection for bryce and that's literally what they did and free agency mm-hmm. in the draft it was all centered around bryce to the point where they didn't really do a lot uh mm-hmm. defense wise in the draft at least um skylar what which one what you got going for this Man, what's the main storyline you're looking at i mean i hate to be the w downer but when you're two and 15 <laughs> there's a crap ton of, of options to pick from here but <laughs> I, i'm gonna go in Stu's wheelhouse here because i think it could go cornerback i could talk pass rushers replacing burns but i want to go with the running backs because you have what four or five different options back there and I'm just going to put this out there. Early on in his career and in his college career, I was a huge Chuba guy. And I still am a Chuba guy. I I just don't know that what we saw last year is enough for me to say he's the number one guy going into camp, into the season, and he will finish the season as number one. A lot of people just seem to think, just because he stole that job from Miles Sanders a year ago, think that he's the guy. Folks, he averaged 3.8 yards per carry. That was only like 0.5 yards better than Miles Sanders behind yeah, that not offensive really. line. It's yes. not it's not necessarily Chuba or Miles' fault because of that O line, but I I didn't see RB1 stuff out of Chuba. And I'm not saying that he can't be that. I just think you have so many options back there, especially when you're still paying Miles a pretty decent amount of money. Yeah. Let, let the man try and earn that job back. Let those two split that that the the workload early on in the season while you're trying to get Jonathan Brooks back. You have Rashad Penny can handle the short yard stuff. But I just don't know. Like I've tried to play this scenario out many different ways, and I can't get the same answer every time as to what this thing's gonna look like in terms of the division of labor at the running back spot. Like I don't know who's gonna be number one, two, three, or four. I, I can't figure it out. That's a good point you bring up because we all we didn't really clown Miles Sanders. In fact, we were one of the few podcasts where we were like, hasn't he been hurt since like preseason? And he was kind of hurt throughout the year. So we were kind of letting people know, well, he had a hip injury or something and something else. And that stuff lingers once you're in season. You don't become 100 percent healthy again. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So like once the season starts. So we kind of knew. But we also were like, do we need Miles? Because we're paying all this money to him. And Chuba's actually doing what Chuba's doing. But to Skyler's point. Chuba didn't even break a thousand yards uh, last year, and he got a, a majority of the carries after a certain point. I'm curious to see Miles in this too. I'm curious to see all of the running backs in this yeah. behind this offensive line because it's not the same offensive line. And again, it feels like they're going into preseason with an identity. Like like Stu said, if you know what your assignment is, it's a lot easier to complete it than to be told, "Oh, just you know, 
<laughs> just get out there and uh make something shake, dog. Yeah, do a little razzle dazzle. <laughs> like, you know, you know what we do. You know how we do, you know, just get out well, there and do well, it. Well, <laughs> well, to go back to uh Stu's, you know, all the all the different seasonings and stuff. If you go in the drawer and sometimes you don't have all those things and you run out and you're like, oh crap, what are we gonna use now? So salt like, and pepper. Salt and pepper. So salt and pepper. last year you had tuba, you had miles, <laughs> and you had what else? You had you had you had your salt pepper and you didn't you didn't have anything else really. This year you have up. you have yeah. the full cupboard. Like you have yeah. so many different options. And that's what Dave Canales has said. He's like, everywhere I've been, we've had to dig into guys on the practice squad at running back because you're gonna need that many guys at running back. You're gonna get banged up. Especially right. if you're gonna run the ball like you're intending to exactly. run it. Right? Talking so about running gonna, the ball, I believe him. Like I believe there's not gonna be a guy that's gonna have 300 carries on this roster. So no. just get just get that yeah. in your head now. But they'll, I think they'll do like a two, three headed monster of running backs. I don't think it'll be like one yeah, lead yeah. back and then, you know, everybody, not, it won't be like a Derrick Henry situation. It'll be maybe Chuba, take your, Miles. Take uh, your turn. Yeah. The kid we drafted, um, who I saw, he's still, they're keeping him, they're not rushing him back. They don't need to because they've got guys ahead of him that can carry the load. That offensive line, though, yeah, that's one of the things for me. It kind of connects to that. I kind of have two things. One of them is a continuation of the end of last year. Uh, I want to see Bryce Young's footwork because that was what I got flamed for on Twitter at the end of the year last year. And everyone was like, oh, well, it's the offensive line, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, it's actually coaching. <laughs> They're not coaching him to do this. He's just literally leisurely taking a step or two back and then tossing it into the secondary someplace if he gets the ball out and, and but from pressure or whatever. And from what I saw in Blueprint, that was one of the things Dave Canales was hitting on first. Like, we got to get your footwork right before we can get – you know, you getting the ball out 2.7 seconds and knowing the route, like everything starts with your feet and your hips. Like we ate all that together. And to see Dave Canales and Bryce working on that and yeah. seeing Bryce actually climb in the pocket, like doing the ladder and everything. It does look better. It looks better. We, it looks we right. saw a very small glimpse of it and who knows what we'll see because it's going to change whenever you get guys actually diving around your feet. But when we were back in spring, like it, it just looked much better, looked more cr- crisp, more clean. I mean, Stu, you were there right there with it, too. I'm sure you saw it just as well. Yeah. I can tell you this. When it, when it comes to offseason, what people do need to realize is when you get players like Bryce that, you know, I was I say – some people say love the grind, right, love the journey. I, I like to say respect the grind, respect the journey, right, respect the fact that you have to go to practice and you have to perfect your craft. Bryce Bryce Young is a guy that I think he he sees this opportunity this off this off season and he says oh I get to go get better today and I feel like he's done that he seems like that type of guy and when you're getting paid to lead a team the way he's being paid and why in, in, in the position that he's in this whole footwork thing if if he's being taught something. Oh, best believe it's gonna you're gonna we're gonna see that come to fruition. I look at Josh Allen, right? Yeah. Josh Allen from one year to the next, when they were like, hey, work on this and work on that. Totally different. Yes. Totally different. Right. Yeah. Right. And so these are professionals. These guys have the ability to learn probably faster than any average person if at the end of the day. Like the coachability at this level is outstanding and that's one of the things that he tested well on right mm-hmm. so tested so, the highest not all tested the high. yeah, so. and it seems like he has the right coach to get him there See, and, I'm, is, I, and i and i know i'm over here getting people riled up and excited yeah, you are yeah, but, you are. <laughs> but just go ahead <laughs> man like you know and i think what should what we should be excited about is that i don't think we should go into the season I'm putting my Skylar Callahan hat on right now. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> and say to ourselves, oh, this is about to be like the turnaround of the century, right? If it is, great. But I think where we come with this offseason, we have a better understanding of what this off what offseason is supposed to feel like. Because when you don't know what things you don't really understand what's going on. You don't understand what what it used to feel like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and people are kind of like, ah, oh, like you know, you just you just get weary, right? You get anxious when you don't know what you're doing. You get anxious, and so I feel like we've been in this pattern, this cycle for so long. 
And I and and finally, you get somebody in leadership that can actually say, "Hey, we're going to do things this way, and this is what we're looking for." And so now we can all sit back and say, "Oh, well, that looks like exactly what he said he was looking for." So I guess we'll wait and see, just like yeah. he has to wait and see. And if it doesn't pan out, then it doesn't pan out. We're not all up in arms. And we just understand that, hey, this is year one of Dan Morgan and Dave Canellis. Go to year two. And then we start stacking the years and stacking the players and stacking the culture, stacking, um, you know, our expectations. Right now, our expectations are let's win more than two games. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say this though about you know me being the fan on the panel here. Uh I will say this when Carolina has gotten good, it didn't take very long. When the coach mm-hmm. came in, it took about a year, about a year yeah. or so. And that that second year was when you kind of knew whether or not they were gonna be here or not. Well, and I'm talking uh Ron Rivera. Uh now Ron took a little bit longer. I think it was year three that we got into and, and you guys started like oh and two or something like that and then you rattled off like 10 straight wins or something like that finished 12 and four uh yeah. won, the, won the division um before him john fox same way we were picking number two in draft uh when john fox came in as head coach drafted julius peppers who, who they draft later when oh yeah <laughs> like we well steve smith was in that draft too i think Jordan Gross was in that draft too. That might be one of the best drafts we've had. So the draft class it set it up. So Fox is the same way. Uh, and then even the very beginning, uh, Dom Capers, way back. It, we were in the playoffs, trying went to the NFC championship game against Green Bay in 96. <laughs> like the team started in 95. So it's like you got it don't take long in NFL to turn it around. The Rams yeah. just recently, when they won. Uh, their Super Bowl. Yeah, was they bottom, yeah, they were bottom of the barrel a couple years before he got there. Like, and yeah. he turned it around like literally after. All they did, all they needed was a you know a quarterback situation. Yeah, yeah. the Which one is thing funny I now see... is Jared Goff's actually uh, one of my favorite quarterbacks now. Uh, just up in Detroit, he just got overvalued, I guess, in LA yeah. or something. I don't know. But the Detroit, one thing I keep kind of getting so. uh, teased with is kind of the the whole Jacksonville turnaround and. The more I think about it, it does kind of line up like Trevor Lawrence went through a chaotic rookie season with the whole Urban Meyer fiasco. <laughs> I mean, it it's was a bad product. <laughs> I, Bryce Young went with, you know, maybe not to that extent, but it was at least on the field just as ugly. And they kind of got the, you know, they got Doug Peterson in there. They found what they needed to do. They took that next step. They're still waiting to really kind of ascend, but it feels like they're they're about to be there. And Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the same timeline you can see the Panthers on. Like this year, take that stuff. Like Stu said, win five, six games this year. And even though at the end of the day you're not going to be happy, you look back on it and you think, well, shoot, we just you know doubled, tripled our win total from a year ago. That's that's way more progress than you would have thought. Next year you get the competitive football and then you can start competing. The Mm -hmm. best case scenario is that we're sitting here at this point next year talking about how Bryce Young might become the first $500 million quarterback. Because that's it's lining up for him and his class. It's going to be somebody out of that class that ends up yeah. getting that. And CJ, no one will pick. Yeah, CJ's got the lead right now. I kind of need to see CJ's season too because I think the league. Yeah, yeah, league yeah. We can't we can't start about. talking elite until it's done multiple years. Yeah, huh? you got to do it more one more year, brother. Because like this one, the first uh, when we're sitting here talking on this in twenty years, the first billion dollar quarterback. Pat Mahomes. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be Pat Patrick Mahomes, Mahomes still gonna be he's playing. Gonna, he's, he's gonna take a pay cut. He's gonna have <laughs> He'll take a cut to get it to him, but that's what he did to get to the four hundred and whatever million he signed uh, recently. And your boy, I didn't realize uh, until watching Blueprint, uh, Brant Tillis put that contract together because he was the Kansas yeah. City cap guy. Now he's here in Carolina. See what I mean? Like they just they're doing things. It's crazy for me to see them do things the right way. And that's mm-hmm. sad because this is my yeah. team. <laughs> like, and for me to be like, wow, they're actually this is normal. That makes sense. Hey, yeah, yeah. they drafted the guy. They're not how to move that back. money around. Like he knows how to move the money he around. Knows, he knows how to move the money around. That's why I'm like, Bryce Young might be the first five hundred million dollar quarterback if everything works out. Like, say he comes out and has a CJ Stroud type of he's an MVP talks when Man, we get to the end of the I really season. think that I, I really think that uh 
Um, Bryce really appreciates you speaking that. <laughs> He's the uh, hire me. You, know, you might need to check your heart right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Willie Smith, uh, super fan for Believe Panther, says Frank Wright's spices and condiments were vanilla and mayonnaise. He didn't try any spices. And uh, he did say it was pretty vanilla. Um, oh, my thing, uh, my uh, big takeaway going to training camp. Skyler, maybe you can help answer this question. Who is cornerback number two uh, for this team? Because uh, that's not the right one. Um, Tater Dog Wilson says, is Gilmore coming to Carolina? Uh, right, I'm sitting there trying to think, who's going to be starting on the other side of J.C. Horn at cornerback? Because it was Dante Jackson, but now he's well, not here. Who, who is it supposed to be? Now, right now it's going to be Dane Jackson, um, guy that comes from Buffalo. He has some starting experience, mainly a reserve, but – I don't know. Like they're, they're bringing in some guys to work out now, and I've said it all off season. I mean, they they have the first peck. They're f- number one in the pecking order for waivers, so you know they're going to be looking at corners, pass rushers, mm. stuff like that. So I think they're really going to pursue the waiver wire hard in terms of corner and pass rusher. And I don't care who it is, you've got to bring somebody else in, whether it's through waivers or you get to the end of roster cuts and you bring somebody else in, or maybe it is. Not, not, maybe not Stephon Gilmore, but another free agent veteran that's out there. There's not very many left, but you got to have somebody with starting experience to compete with Dane Jackson. Again, Dane's kind of been a 50-50 guy starting and in, in being a rotational guy. If JC has the injury issues pop up again, now Dane Jackson's your number one, and your number two is fill in the blank. DiCaprio Boodle, Deshaun Jameson. Who? <laughs> so, exactly. What? So this is why you need a third guy for insurance. It's not just to help compete with Dane Jackson, but it's insurance in case, God forbid, something happens again with J.C. Horn. Do you want Stephon Gilmore? Do you guys want him back? Selfishly, I, I think, yeah, it would be great. But I, I, I think for him, it doesn't make a lot of sense because you're getting towards the end of your career. You want to go win a Super Bowl. And I get he could come here and take the hometown discount, but why would you do that when you can go win a Super Bowl and make more money? Don't so, go to the Cowboys. That's what he's trying well, to do. Well, report yeah. re- according to Jeremy Fowler here, Jerry Jacobs um right. wants to visit the Panthers. Uh Jerry Jacobs played for the Detroit Lions last year. Um, started starting game. 29 of uh, 40 appearances hmm. in 2024 uh coming off of his 2024 campaign. Um he that had seems to be the old career me. Career high 744 appearances while starting 12 of 15 games. He finished the year with 55 tackles, eight passes defended, and three okay. interceptions. Okay, you're talking me into it a little bit. I'm just worried because it's like this is a passing league. And even Canales on Blueprint during the draft, he was like, uh, yeah, just sitting there watching all these cornerbacks go off the board. Like they, they knew in the back of their head, like it was in between the first and well, second, I think, where they were like, should we do something? They just waited and let the board come to them. And they missed out on all these cornerbacks that left. That's the hardest thing about it is like you, you get to – the dog days of summer and you're looking at the roster and you're like, goodness gracious, like they need another corner. They need another pass yeah. rusher. But when you come from the situation that Dan inherited, you can't fix all that with one bandage in one off season. Like this is going to mm-hmm. be a multi-year process. Yeah. Cause you get, cause you can still develop the young guys on that roster to be That's somebody. True. They do have Troy Hill and come roster. Out there and ball out. Yeah. And maybe this is the year, hopefully this is the year, that J.C. Horn actually is available more often than not and actually flourishes into what we think he might be, which could be potentially a top five cornerback in the league. When he's out there, he feels like a number one like cornerback. It's just a matter of keeping him out there. So um, that was my thing. Cornerback seems like out of all the positions that they've attacked this offseason, cornerback seems like they've kind of just been like, eh, <laughs> let's just see what we got. got, got bigger issues. Players. Technically, I mean, you had to fix the O-line. You spent $154 million yeah. on patching up that interior. And I, I, to me, that's way worth more than anything you could have done at corner. That's true. And then they did – they had to address – I mean, they lost Brian Burns. They lost Frankie Louvu. They lost key guys in the front seven. They had to they play money ball, though, remember? They, they did play money ball. And they did a, I think they did a good job. I'm curious, too, about J, J, uh, Jadavion Clowney and how much he can actually give at this part of his career. Because if he can give us seven, eight sacks – Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's yeah, yeah, yes. One of, <laughs> one of the things too is on offense, you can actually create a defensive strategy if you go out there and run. If you run the if you run the ball really well and hit these play actions like you're supposed to, 
you're running the clock out and you're scoring. If you sure. run the clock yeah. out and you score, you put the defense in a less stressful situation, right? Because now your opponent's offense has to figure out how to basically get deep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't just necessarily go under routes and in crossing routes all the way down the field because you're running out of time. That's right? what Jim so, Trussell, that's what Jim Trussell used to do when he was back at Youngstown State. Like he knew he didn't have the talent to beat some of the teams he was playing, but he would suffocate the hell out of teams by running the football and not giving it back to them. It would irritate the crap out of other teams. That's how he would win games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in high school a lot where like where they can't throw, but they got I mean, a huge kind of, false offensive line. Yeah. Look at how the Seahawks were when they were the Legion of That's Doom. a good point. Yeah. Like yeah. They were basically like Russell Wilson was run. They were running the ball, and they was play action. <laughs> and Russell Wilson was getting that ball out, and if he wasn't Man, getting the ball out, he was getting up out of there. I couldn't okay? stand Russell. Third and fifteen. <laughs> third and fifteen. Russell Wilson. If it's third, he's gonna connect. He's going yeah. to convert it, and it's gonna take fifteen seconds <laughs> for that play and, to develop. And the teams that, and when you and when you when you stop them from running the ball. That's where teams can get ahead, right? I look at how we played them in the playoffs, right? Mm -hmm. They couldn't stop our run game, and we stopped theirs early on. So we got the bigger jump. Mm -hmm. And then, lo and behold, they start coming back in the third, fourth quarter. Oh, he's playing the playoff game. Yeah, Yeah. playoff game. Man, y'all about gave me a stroke in that game. I'm like, I'm (laughs) up here. (laughs) I'm like, but I just just think once once this team really understands the identity, like the defense will understand it and the offense will understand it. And it just goes back to that saying that I had earlier. It was like the common understanding. Everybody going into work every day, understanding – who's who, what they do best, and how are we going to win these games? High school is more fun when you show up and you know everybody as opposed to being the new kid. And you got to make all those relationships from scratch all of a sudden. If you were watching Instagram, Instagram has an hour limit, so it cut that off. I figured out what was up with the Twitter premium. Uh, I I don't have time to do it for this episode, but we'll have it together by the time we come back for the next episode. Um, And I'll tell you guys. Yeah, well, well, yeah. But he still got me, but <laughs> he's, I've still got to give him some money. But uh, we'll figure out uh, all that. So we'll have it back on the Twitter, on the Believe in Panthers Twitter account uh, the next time we're back on. I think I'm trying to – you guys, you've been on vacations and stuff. I have not gone anywhere, <laughs> like all summer yet. We kind of pushed it towards the end of it in August uh, before all my high school football and all that stuff starts back up again mid-August. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be here first week of August. Uh, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm, leave, I'm definitely not going to be home. So we're definitely going somewhere. And I may come down to Charlotte for Panthers training camp uh, in August. And I want to get coordinated with y'all so we can actually see each other and, and yeah. maybe do something down there. Even if we do a, uh, an episode and I'm sitting in a hotel room, uh, it'd be after I'd been at training camp that day or whatever. Um, last year left a bad taste in my mouth in terms of not being able to see anything. Uh, the only thing I got was a, a sub for my efforts <laughs> <laughs> for dropping down. It was oh, a damn yeah. good sub. Shout out to Monster Subs and Spartanburg. It was, that should have been a sign of the things to come last year. It really should have, looking back on it. Like, that was that was the Jets' uh, joint So practice. what we should do is, though, we should go to 1058 to get some wings at uh, yeah. Thomas, yeah. Davis. Spot? Thomas Davis spot. Yeah. Oh, say less. You ain't got yeah, nice little, wings. nice little plug for Thomas Davis and his family. We need to see if we're we going to be there to, during yeah, training camp. Let us do a little something while we're there because we could uh, easily, I can bring all my stuff and set it up and just we can do an audio uh, episode of uh, Pod while we're there uh, in there. Maybe get TD on if he's in the building. So let's, we'll see. We'll see. But it's all up in the air. Training camp starts Wednesday. Players start to arrive uh, tomorrow, <laughs> even though it's, it's moving. It's, it's, it's the practice facility, right? They're at the practice facility. Yeah, they're at the practice yeah, facility. They're, they're at the stadium. Yeah. How does so? Oh, so they're at BOA. So how does well, this technically. work? How does this work in terms of because that's a smaller area than Wofford, right? So is it first come first serve? Because I know the tickets are free. They there was an allotment. I can't remember the exact amount. Maybe Stu, maybe not. It maybe like, like two thousand. It was like two thousand yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So um, apparently they and I don't know because I haven't been down there since OTAs and minicamp, but they were doing a whole bunch of construction while we were there. And I think they finished it all. And I think there's even bleachers now. And I think yeah, there's, there's like bleachers. an actual space for fans to like go and get a drink or whatever. Like, 
So if that's the case, it's really changed in the last like month and a half. So I'm oh, yeah, they got bleachers that. right there um, at the entrance where I, the I bubble used to be. Out. I got to plan this out then because I do. I do think I'm going to try to go down because I'm an hour away from Charlotte in Kernersville um, towards Greensboro uh, with some high point area in the triad. So it don't take but like 45 minutes to an hour for me to get down there, but I'd probably stay and drive back in the morning like I did before. You know, Spartanburg was another hour or 45 minutes or so on the other side of Charlotte, I think it was. So it was a little bit of a longer drive. Um, but yeah, to Stu's point, I probably should have thought about that whole experience going into the season as a, precursor <laughs> to what was going to happen in the season. Um, no but bad juju. No bad juju. I'm feeling good. I know you guys are starting to feel better than we did at the end of season four. Uh, Dave Canales is in the house. Dan Morgan's driving the bus. Uh, Bryce Young looks bigger, looks a little more confident. Uh, he's never going to be the guy that talks you into a victory. He's not the, the rah-rah talk guy, but he leads by action. And I'm, I'm curious to see how he handles this with uh, the franchise actually – still believing in him and giving him the weapons he needs. This is Bryce Young season. Like it, it, he, it's got to happen this, because if he can't do it this season, what they put around him and the O-line and everything else, this conversation is going to be a lot different for us uh, at this point next year, I think, because David Tepper and Nicole Tepper don't strike me as being very patient. <laughs> so I don't know if they're not to this extent, like letting them go five years and then not get anything out of it. And we restart all over again at quarterback. I think but, yeah, Bryce is fine. I think this year, I'll, no matter what happens this year, this has got to be a start over year for him because last right. year, year one. you, yeah. basically, year one. you yeah. basically dumped him in chicken grease. Yeah. Yeah. So, about chicken stop making what is going hungry. on with chicken today? Can we? Wow, <laughs> it's man. about fried chicken today. Yeah, man. It's it's hot sauce. <laughs> well, we're gonna, I think we're going to stop it right there because we ran a little bit over. Um, follow us on Twitter at our own personal handles. And of course, at Believe in Panthers on well X, uh, tw- whatever Never the kids call it wrong. these days. Yeah, just whatever. Follow us there. You'll get the latest on when the next shows are. Uh, it'll be kind of herky jerky as we're in training camp and figuring everything out. We'll be back on our regular Tuesday schedule once the season begins, so you know you'll be able to catch us there. Um, I, again, I'll get the Twitter situation straightened out by the time we're back on, and you'll be able to watch us there on Twitter uh, as well as our Instagram, our uh, Facebook. Mm-hmm all that other stuff there. So you'll be able to catch all that there. The audio for this episode will be up a little bit later on the day on the Believe Podcast Network channel. Uh, anything else you guys got before we get out of here for today? Go golf. Oh, good to be back. <laughs> Please, U.S. Men's Olympic team, don't embarrass us. Like, embarrass them. Like, that's what you're there for. You're supposed to be out there embarrassing people and you're out here <laughs> just holding on. Yeah. Holding on against South Sudan. Like, if the elders can see all right now, <laughs> like yeah, if Jordan yeah. and Pippen and them are paying attention and they're watching this. Shout out to South Sudan for showing up. They showed up and showed out. Like that would have been the that would have been the biggest upset in international basketball history like, <laughs> if South Sudan had beat them. They were leading the whole game. <laughs> they were leading the whole game. Like, what are we yeah. doing, USA? Shout out to LeBron James. Yeah, He's going to be JT in, so. Thor's upsetting the USA national team. JT, I thought you would like that because I'm like, Scott knows a little bit about JT Thor. Like, he's about to write an article or two about him. And this dude out here leading South Sudan to a, <laughs> an upset win over the Americans. What's going on? So, I don't know. Olympics are starting this week. I think the opening ceremonies are Friday. And then we'll start getting into their games and stuff. So, these games actually count. So, we'll see uh, how all that does. We'll probably talk a little bit about that, too, when we get back in. Uh, shout out to everybody that stopped in today. Uh, for this opening Salvo season five premiere. Uh, again, follow us to find out for the next one, probably next week. But for uh, Skylar Callahan, for Jonathan Stewart, this is Desmond Johnson. You've been watching and listening to the Believe in Carolina Panthers podcast here on Believe in Podcast, or, excuse me, Believe Podcast Networks. Keep counting.